one of the questions that when I was first, um, like when I first got licensed, I was jumping and that was one of the things I researched. I was like, what does being on a team even mean? Do I want to be on a team? Because I know that can be really helpful, especially the first couple of years, they like show you the ropes and you learn how to actually run a business and stuff. Or do I want to try to do it on my own? Welcome to the Real Estate Agent Success Tools interview series, where we interview successful agents and share their secrets with you. All right, everybody, thank you so much for uh, hanging out with Sam and myself today. Sam, I'm really excited to, uh, to chat with you today because, you know, those first couple of years, first one, two or three years for a new realtor are scary because you don't know if you're going to get paid, when you're going to get paid, when the money's going to come in. Uh, we all get into it thinking we're going to make hundreds of thousands of dollars and then ooh, maybe even millions. But, um, you know, before we get into all that, you know, why don't you tell us, a little bit about you, you know, who you are, you know, maybe like your origin story, if you would. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so I'm Sam, obviously. Uh, like you said, I am from Phoenix, Arizona. I was born and raised here. I've lived in the Phoenix area my whole life. I love this city. I love Arizona, um, except for like the three months in the summer where you want to die because <laughs> it's so hot. Um, but I got into real estate. I've been been a realtor for a year and a half now. So I'm coming up on the two-year mark in a few months. And I had thought about it for a while, but I was kind of scared to jump in. I'm a bit of an overthinker um, and can be OCD sometimes. So <laughs> I thought about becoming a real estate agent and I decided that before I was going to jump in, I was going to do probably too much research ahead of time to know what I was getting into. Um, so I think that was something that as I've talked to other agents that kind of is something I didn't like not a lot of people did um was do a lot of research so I did tons of diving into podcasts books articles YouTube videos finding out everything I could about being an agent the first year the first couple of years what expectations to have um just because even though I wanted to jump in I wasn't really sure what to expect um I've had a background in HR and project management and uh, my degree is actually in counseling because I love working with people forming those relationships and helping people kind of work towards goals um so I thought real estate would be a really fun way to kind of bring all of those skills and passions together and hopefully fingers crossed make money doing it yeah yeah you know a couple of things you said uh, I want you to tell us some of the books and podcasts you listen to, but you know, yeah, people might not realize this. And if you're not in real estate and you're hearing this, I apologize, but sometimes being a realtor can be like being a counselor. So that probably set you up for success <laughs> in a way. Um, and you and I, we think a lot of the, a lot of like, I'm kind of a ready aim, aim, aim. Then I, when I get ready to fire, I go back to aiming again. So that's um, <laughs> a blessing and a curse. So yeah, tell us some of that research you did, like books and podcasts that you prepped yourself with. Yeah, um, I think honestly, the, the biggest source of information that was great for me uh, was just YouTube. I YouTubed all of the agents that I could find both in my area, um, but also just a lot of agents who kind of shared their origin story about how long it took, what it actually realistically looked like the first couple of years. Um, so a few of the kind of um, big players like Chase and Miles, uh, Chase and J Miles on YouTube, I've watched tons of his stuff for like years now. Um, and he was really realistic about like his first year was a struggle. Like he wasn't able to pay some of his bills. He would come home and his electricity would be switched off. He was doing, you know, a lot of rentals and stuff, which are like a hundred bucks at the end of the day. So just really struggling the first few months. So for me, A, I identified with that. The first few months were really rough for me, but it also helped me realize like, okay, I'm not going to be making millions like right out of the gate. I need to have a plan. Like I need to be actually ready to probably struggle and not succeed for at least six to 12 months when I jump into this. Right. And a lot of people say that six to 12 months number. And as a new agent, I certainly didn't think I would fall into that category. Oh no, I'll, I'll figure it out right away. Um, <laughs> I'll which, be the exception. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll be the exception. But yeah. you know, it's funny with such a low success rate of like, I think it's 85% fail. I'm not sure on that number. NAR has got it. But um, you know, what was your journey in that first year? What did you have to do to be successful? And I guess a really good question to give people context is, were you a solo agent or were you on a team? 
Yeah. So I've been a solo agent. That was one of the questions that when I was first, um, like when I first got licensed, I was jumping and that was one of the things I researched. I was like, what does being on a team even mean? Do I want to be on a team? Cause I know that can be really helpful, especially the first couple of years, they like show you the ropes and you learn how to actually run a business and stuff. Or do I want to try to do it on my own? Um, with all the research that I did, um, just kind of seeing how teams run and operate. Um, for me, I just felt being a solo agent was going to be a better fit, even though it was probably going to be a lot harder. I, the reason I got into real estate is to have full creativity um, and how you want to build your business. You get to set the standards for how your clients are treated. You get to, you know, keep that bar really, really high when it comes to um, quality and things like that. And um, you also get to decide how things are run. You get to set up the organization, the process and stuff like that. Um, I lost a lot of that freedom um, if I joined a team. So I decided I was going to just try it by myself for the first year. Um, but definitely the biggest thing I think that made a difference my first year was deciding I needed training. And that was what I looked for in the brokerage that I decided to sign up with. Um, that wasn't my number one question for all of them. Like the splits in the end, if you're really good at what you do, the splits are not going to make or break you. Um, everyone's got kind of the same, you know, tools and all the kind of shiny objects and stuff. But training was the one thing that at least my first year, I was like, I need it. I know absolutely nothing. I don't have family in real estate. I didn't like grow up in some cool real estate empire. Like I was starting from scratch knowing absolutely nothing. So training was my number one priority when I was trying to figure out kind of what that first year needed to look like for me. So if you were in your first year, actually, uh, real quick, how many transactions did you do in your year one? So my first year, I did 10 transactions, but it was like all condensed hey. to the last few, the last few months. That's okay. First, That's okay. <laughs> so the first then, few months were really rough. Nothing happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a whole bunch of crickets. And like, who do I call? How often do I call them? But in, in your first year, when you had questions, because holy smokes, and I have lots of questions. Who still, <laughs> who, yeah, it never stops. Um, who would you call? So for me, with my brokerage, our, um, our broker is not a competing broker. So he literally is just there for the agents. He doesn't do transactions. He doesn't do deals. He doesn't get clients or anything. He's just there to answer our questions. So uh, Barry is the broker over at my um, brokerage, and he is a lifesaver. The amount of times I call and text him like, hey, so the deal is blowing up, or hey, I've got a really weird question, or okay, Barry, like I did something wrong. Like help. <laughs> He's always there to help me out. And a couple of the really seasoned agents um, really came alongside me and kind of helped helps guide me that first year as well. So between those Rockstar agents and my broker, that's that's how I made it during that first year without doing anything illegal to my knowledge. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And or, or at least you didn't know that you did it illegal and we'll leave it at that. Exactly. Illegally, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so and yeah, the people you surround yourself with are incredibly important. Um, I kind of, my, how I've slowly come to realize that my superpower is surrounding myself with people smarter than me and asking really dumb questions, or at least dumb questions that I feel are dumb questions. Um, so that's, that is what it is. But, um, you know, if you were to create a roadmap for somebody in their first year along your, how you progressed as a solo agent, like what would that roadmap look like for someone? Yeah, I would say the first step is just have realistic expectations. A lot of the agents that started along with me, um, there was a big training group of us. I'm the only one who is still an agent out of that group. Um, and just listening to them, their expectations were really inaccurate. Like they thought they were going to come in, make a ton of money with no work and stuff like that. So that's just honestly, yeah, that's where you need to start is have realistic expectations of what that first year is going to look like um, and how much work it's actually going to take and give yourself a good buffer like 12 months just in case six months maybe but hey if you make it sooner than that great but just have those realistic expectations um know what you're going to need in that first year for me it was training um if you've grown up like if your family has you know real estate in the background if you have friends connections something like that you may not need as much training as i did i came into it absolutely blind knowing nothing so for me training was going to be really important having a training program like a six month training program uh was really key um, something else I would say kind of as you're starting, once you get your license, the minute you get your license, um, you just are kind of thrown in, like sink or swim, figure it out, good luck. And you don't really know what to do. I mean, when you're, when you're getting your license, they teach you how to pass the test, um, and your brokerage, if they have training, will sometimes teach you, um, 
occasionally like how to fill out the paperwork and how to do transactions, but you don't really learn how to run a successful business. They don't really show you what you're going to be doing all day, every day, like what your schedule needs to look like. What are those actual things that you can be doing to be working on getting clients um, and closing deals and actually making your business succeed and scale and things like that. Um, so for me, something I kind of fell into the trap of is every single shiny, shiny object that someone advertised to me, I paid money for. <laughs> um, when you become an agent, everyone in their mom starts like marketing to you like, here's how you get leads and here's how you succeed. And here's the website that's going to make a difference. And this one tool will save your business. And the first year, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I had no strategy. And so I just bought into every single gimmick that people sold me. Um, and so I was doing 5% of like a hundred different things. Obviously it didn't work. Um, and so I think right. just getting really clear on what three things you're really drawn to, whether it's maybe you want to do social media, maybe you want to do like actual like in-person door knocking or cold calling. Ugh, I hate cold calling. That was not one of mine. Um, or maybe you really want to lean into your sphere. And so I think get really clear on three, don't go too big, but just three main pillars of business that you can focus on that first year and really dive into those try to ignore all the noise ignore what everyone else is doing it's so easy to get distracted and play that comparison game but just get really clear on those three things you want to focus on for your business and just work on perfecting that in that first year what are your three things <laughs> Excellent question. So my first one is my sphere. Like I said, I was born and raised in Arizona. I have so many connections, friends and family here. And that is where the majority of my business has come forward um, over my career. So number one was my sphere. Uh, number two is social media. I've really dived in the past year and a half into social media. I did not do social media before becoming an agent. So it has been a struggle like the Instagram and Facebook 101 classes and all of that. But now that I have kind of learned it a little bit. I love it. And that's something where I feel like I can show up authentically. I can just engage with people and just be my like kind of weird corny self online. And I think that really connects with people. Um, and then my third sphere is um, Google My Business. And so that's something I've kind of been building out this past year as well is my Google My Business page. Maybe it's like Google Profile though. They may have changed the name, but um, kind of really leaning into that, learning as much as I can and optimizing my Google My Business so that when people um, Google Realtors in my area or even Google me by name, I'm like the first thing to pop up and um, kind of getting business through that as well. Nice. Now, a question that's in the same vein, but different. Um, what type of client do you like to work with? Obviously, when we work with our sphere, we get all sorts of different move up, move down, first time home buyers, et cetera. But like, how did you decide on, um, you know, what type of clients you would work with and, and, you know, how you would generate business from them specifically? Because one thing we're taught, uh, as, as a real estate agent is like, who's your ideal client? What's your ideal client profile? Like what was, what were, what were your thoughts on that? Cause I'm certain you stumbled across that in your research and how do you decide on it? Yes. How do you, how do you go after them? <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's something I heard over and over again. That first year is like, find your niche. You need to find like who your ideal client is and like market towards them. I did not listen my first year. It was my first year. I was desperate. I was going to help anyone and everyone who was like, I need a house. I'd be like, great. I don't care who you are. I'm going to help you out. Um, that was a mistake. <laughs> it's not, it's really not worth it. There are some people where um, they are just kind of like horrible people or incredibly demanding or not respectful of you, your business, your time. Um, and so there were a few people that I helped that first year where they took 80% of my time and cost 100% of my problems. And like in the end, some of them, we didn't even end up closing a deal. So uh, for me, I found that people a, in my sphere, but like people I just kind of connect with. When you have a first conversation, whenever I meet someone who's looking to buy or sell a home, the first thing I do is we schedule a Zoom call just so they can get to know me, I can get to know them. And we both can kind of feel out, is this gonna be a good fit? Do we wanna work together? Are we the best fit? Um, to kind of help them in their, in their home goals. And so kind of within that first call, I can get a really good sense of like, who they are, what they're about. Um, if I'm the best agent for them, sometimes I'm not, sometimes I'm not a good fit. Um, and so kind of knowing how I can connect them with someone else. But for me, it's for people who will um, be really respectful of my time and my business and uh, listen <laughs> to what I'm telling them. Because ultimately, if they're not willing to do that, we're not going to work well. And that's a huge disservice to my other clients. That's something I've learned is I only bring on people who are not going to be disruptive or disrespectful to the clients that I'm already serving and working with. And so that's kind of been a, a big thing for me that I've learned over this past year and a half. Yeah, it is the, the growing pains of being a new agent to, 
to getting to the point to maybe where you can tell clients no, like, or mm -hmm. fire a client or decide that you're not going to work with somebody, you have to go through the growing pains of that for the first year or so, or two or three or four, right? To really start Yeah, to it, it can take a while. I'm still learning. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it'll never stop. Like you said, um, and you really kind of can figure that out. So what your first year, year you did 10, what's, uh, what's year two going to have in store for you? So uh, my business plan and my goal for year two is to double, hopefully more, but at least uh, double my business this year, which I'm really excited about so far on track for that. So excited to see kind of what 2022 has in store. I work with a lot of buyers. I know everyone else is probably like in the same boat, but for me, I love working with buyers. It's a lot more work. It's a lot more demanding, especially in this market. Um, and I enjoy working with sellers as well. But for me, the majority of my business, about 80% is buyers. Um, but I really, I really love it. Like that excitement of going through the process. Um, also kind of being their therapist, especially while this market is so competitive right now. I feel like the majority of my job is just being a therapist day in and day out, but um, I love it. And so that's kind of my ideal client is, is working with buyers, whether it's um, first time or new, newer buyers. It's really fun. Nice. So then if someone was looking to buy or sell in the greater Phoenix area, how would they, uh, how would they reach out and get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that they can get a hold of me. So if they want to connect with me on social media, I'm Samantha, your AZ agent on kind of most platforms, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, all of that good stuff. Um, or my website is just your AZ agent because I do most of Arizona. <laughs> like I'll drive a few hours for you. I don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. And so those are a few ways that they can connect with me. Cool. Awesome. And, you know, if anybody's looking to buy or sell real estate in the Portland, Oregon area or Vancouver, Washington, uh, our team services both both markets. You can reach me at 509-393-9123. Uh, you can call or text that number, or you can shoot me an email at chase, that's C-H-A-C-E at mrhousehack.com. So, all right, everybody, uh, appreciate you hanging out. Samantha, you are a role model. 10 deals in your first <laughs> year. It probably took me almost two years to get up, up to 10 total, but, um, you know, good for you. And thanks, thanks for really sharing all your knowledge and, and all that. So, all right, everybody, until we see you next time, um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I guess catch you next time. Kind of an awkward sign off, but we'll say bye now. <laughs> Thanks for watching the interview all the way to the end. If you liked it, please comment down below and like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you can stay up to date on everything that we put out. If you want to see more interviews just like this one, check out this playlist right here, or you can let YouTube help you out and watch this video right here.